Hi everyone and welcome back to Brian's Horror Corner, or welcome if you are new to my channel. Um, so of course another 1980 horror movie today as we get through our third month here of this first part of part 10 of an ongoing series on my channel where I'm going to take a look at and review horror movies from every single year of 1980s. Um, so the 1980 film today that we're going to take a look at I got from is from my Blue Underground collection. And that movie is Nightmare City, which I have on DVD here by Umber uh, Umberto Lenzi is the director of Nightmare City from 1980. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it um, for my un Blue Underground collection. Of course, it's a first time watch for me as always, or not always, but mostly <laughs> for these. Uh, so Nightmare City... Uh, released in the U.S. in 1983 as uh, City of the Walking Dead, by the way. It's a 1980 Italian-Spanish science fiction horror film directed by Umberto Lenzi. It stars Hugo Slig Sliglitz? Stiglitz as a, new, as a TV news reporter who witnesses the collapse of order in a city overrun by uh, eradicate, er, irradiated blood-drinking ghouls. <laughs> Victims rise from the dead to join the host, adding to the chaos. So yeah, so basically the movie opens with American television reporter Dean Miller, who waits at a small European airport to interview a scientist about a recent nuclear accident when an unmarked Lockheed C-130 Hercules military plane makes an emergency landing. The plane doors open and dozens, dozens of armed, deformed men the scientists among them burst out and attack the military personnel on the runway. They are impervious to, the mo to most injuries and bullet wounds and are relentless in their assault, stopping only to consume the blood of their victims. Miller flees the airport to the TV station where he works and tries to alert the public, but General Merchin Murchison of civil defense will not allow it, shutting down the news station and quarantining the news crew inside to prevent him from doing so. Miller then tries to find his wife, Anna, a doctor at the local hospital, as the crazed assailants overrun the city, their ranks swollen by their former victims. Several zombies attack the TV station, forcing Miller to flee to the hospital. That evening, a group of fiends attack the city's power station, destroying it and plunging the city into darkness. Miller arrives at the hospital as it is being attacked and manages to rescue Anna. They then flee in a stolen ambulance. So yeah, that's the setup and the premise, the beginning for Nightmare City from 1980. As far as the cast goes... We have Hugo Stiglitz as Dean Miller, Laura Trotter as Dr. Anna Miller, Maria Rosari Amagio as Sheila Holmes, uh, Francisco Rabal as Major Warren Holmes, Mel Fearer as General Merchitsian, or Merchins, Murchison, and Sonia Viv Vivani as Cindy. So yeah, that's to set up the premise and the cast for Umberto Lenzi's 1980 uh, Italian science fiction horror film, uh, Nightmare City. Um, I had a lot of fun with this movie, to be honest with you. Um, I've seen some movies recently for this series that have kind of been eh, or in the, the case of the last one, eh. But this one I really had a good time with. It's funny how some... Some of these type of movies, Italian um, horror movies, work for me better than others do. And I'm not going to call this a zombie movie because I don't think it is a zombie movie. I am one of those people that um, I distinguish between zombies and, uh, and virus. And the reason this isn't a zombie is very simple. The people that, that become these, um, these infected people were alive when it happened. They weren't, they weren't dead. Zombies are the walking dead. Um, this wasn't The Walking Dead. This is The Walking, or in this case, in this movie's case, The Running, uh, infected. And it even says that they're um, irradiated blood-drinking ghouls. Well, I guess ghouls can make you think. But but basically, they're, it's like rage virus. It's like um, 28 days, 28 weeks later. That's kind of how I look at this movie, as opposed to a zombie movie. So you won't be hearing the word zombie in my review here. So um, with that being said, let's get into what I like about Nightmare City, starting with the pros. And 
I have to say, the movie doesn't waste any time getting going to where we have to wait like 30 minutes to get to the horror or the action. This movie hits the ground running with a mysterious plane having this emergency landing and then madness ensues. And it really doesn't stop for the whole runtime. It made for it made for a fun and engaging watch right from the jump for me. I like I said I've watched some few a few movies in this series specifically recently where even if the movie got good it took a little while for it to get going, but this movie that's not really the case. We get action right off the bat like 5 minutes into the movie. Um much like something like Dawn of the Dead or something. There's not a lot of uh not a lot of downtime or a lot of um you know wasted time. <clears throat> so that really stood out to me in a positive manner. I have to say, I like the main characters that we follow here, which is another thing that I, you haven't heard me say in a lot of the movies I've reviewed recently. But I thought it made, uh, I thought Dean Miller and his wife Anna specifically, they were likable. And I did want them to survive as the movie went on. I think Dean was good because he's sort of a, a no nonsense, take charge sort of kick ass protagonist that didn't wait around for trouble to come to him like so many characters do. He took it on directly. So that's what I really liked about him. And his wife, Anne, is a little bit more high-strung, of course, with, with everything that's going on. But I don't know. I just found them both likable. Um, even when I was introduced to her when she was doing her uh, surgery and stuff in the hospital, I just... You know how sometimes characters you just... There's just something, there's an aura they give off. It just works. I don't know how to describe it. It helps that they they both were pretty good acting-wise as well. But yeah, I really like those characters. So that made the movie more engaging as well. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a bit or a lot, I'll say, of bloodshed and on-screen kills that include stabbing, shootings, and eating and sucking people. And there are a lot of kills in this movie, including uh, groups of people being killed at a time by these... Um, you know, by these infected people. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's so there's a lot of gore. It's mostly blood. There might be a little bit of gore here and there from like bites on the neck and things like that. But I don't remember seeing a, a whole amount of gore. It's, it's mostly blood, but definitely on screen kills and violence. Um, man, women, it doesn't matter. Like there's a scene at the hospital... Uh, when they when they take that over, um, that's pretty pretty gnarly. I guess the one gore scene, one of my favorite scenes of the movie, is towards the kind of the middle, towards the latter half of the movie, when there's two women in this house. I think one of them is Sheila Holmes, the wife of Major Warren Holmes, and then uh, she has a friend Cindy come over, and Cindy ends up getting attacked in their basement, and he he has some kind of like um, not a two, what's the word? I'm like. Um, why can't I think of the word like iron pole or something? He ends up, he ends up uh, ripping her eye out with it, and that was pretty gnarly. That was probably the best part in terms of gore. Um, but yeah, it's and it's, it's there's like I said, there's there's a lot of people being killed at once or attacked at once, and that kind of they're really action packed. It really ratchets ratchets things up. So that was really enjoyable. Um, like I said, it isn't just. That's, you know, like in a, not to go back to a zombie movie because I mentioned I wouldn't talk about, I wouldn't word, use the word zombie again. I already lied, but it's not just slow zombies moving and then if they catch you, they, they bite your neck and they eat the flesh off of you. Uh, well, that's really cool and I enjoy some of those movies. This is much more of, these people, these uh, infected people are just, they're as capable as regular people in terms of shooting guns, stabbing people, hitting people, fighting people. All those types of things. So which is just another reason why nobody should really consider it a zombie movie. But um, yeah, a lot of action. Um, I like how these chemically infected people on that note are fast, can use guns and knife, can fight. And in, almost, and in some cases almost look normal. They don't really have a lot of makeup on, especially the ones that... They mentioned that victims that rise from the jet dead to join the host. So like the people that they get to and that they kill right away, after a few minutes, they end up joining them. They come back and they don't have a lot of like, um, like gory makeup on their face. They're just, they maybe have some darkness under their eyes. And some of them you can't even tell, which I thought added and added to the suspense and the tension of the movie and really ratcheted it up. So I really liked that because the characters don't know who can be trusted and who can't. In fact, there's a couple. I think it's the I think it's the major Warren Holmes's uh, daughter and uh, or maybe it's not his daughter and son-in-law. 
um, young married couple, but they end up going out to this trailer and they're attacked out there when they think that um, a couple of military personnel come out, but they don't know that they're infected because it doesn't appear like they are. They don't look that different until they hold it, until they point a gun at them and, and stuff, and then it goes from there. But So I thought that was a nice element to the movie. And then finally, atmosphere-wise, the movie has a good, almost a, a claustrophobic type of atmosphere to where I felt like watching this movie, there's really nowhere for these characters to go or to run or hide from these infected folks. They're kind of everywhere in and around this city, and it feels like no matter how, even if they're out of the city, they end up getting out to the countryside, and so they really are everywhere. So it kind of feels like there's no escape, and as you're viewing this movie, you kind of feel that as well. So that was very much a pro for this movie. Um, I only have a couple uh, couple cons or things that I'm not sure worked for me for this movie. Um, some of the makeup effects on the on the infected people, the ones that have been infected a little bit longer, wasn't exactly top-notch gore effects or makeup effects. Um, it looks kind of more like they rub shit on their face, to be honest with you. Kind of disappointing. I know this is a low-budget Italian horror film, but it was a little disappointing that they didn't spend a little bit more of the money on the gore effects, especially the makeup effects. Um, that was a little bit disappointing for me. And then other people have talked about it, but the ending of this movie... It kind of went in a wonky direction that I wasn't all that crazy about, though they somewhat redeem it ultimately because of as it, as it starts to go one way, they sort of bring it back a little bit. If you've seen the movie, if you know, you know, if you've seen the movie, but um, it goes in a direction that <clears throat> as soon as it happens, you're like, oh, God, no, what the fuck? But like I said, it kind of redeems itself as being more of, um, I'll just say, uh, I'll just say the word uh, premonition, let's just say. Um, but I still would have liked a different conclusion or a different ending than that one that we got. It felt kind of lazy, like they needed to write themselves. We just need to write an ending kind of thing. I don't know. I wasn't crazy about it. And then, of course, finally, you have some, some you do have some, some subpar, subpar acting and voice dubbing, of course, as you often get in these. It's pretty typical for these type of foreign movies when they dub over in English. Um, and as, and yeah, the acting other than Hugo Stiglitz and Lauren Trotter, who I thought were both pretty good. And I, I guess, uh, Francisco Rabal was okay too, as, as Major Warren Holmes, but there is some bad acting otherwise in this movie. But that being said, guys, I had a fun time with this. I'm definitely glad to have it in my collection and my Blu-ray collection at that. It doesn't have a ton of extras, as you can see here and do a little pause there. It's pretty basic. There's only one... Uh, like documentary, the tales of the contaminated sin in, interview with director director Umberto Lenzi for about twelve minutes or so. But um, yeah, I I really enjoyed Nightmare City, so I'm gonna give this movie a seven point five out of ten. I had a a good time with it, and it's a good uh, a good infection movie, not a zombie movie. Now get it right. <laughs> no, it. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. People are going to consider it what they want to consider. It's just for me. That's how I, that's sort of how I rationalize the differences. Is that, you know, do they come back from the dead and they're walking slow? Then they're zombies. Or are they, are they fast running, able to operate machine guns and things like that and still function as a human being? Then they're not zombies. They're, they're rage infected. Um, so anyway, that's that. But uh, with that being said, go ahead and comment down below what you guys think of Nightmare City. If you've seen it, do you like it? Do you not? Why, why not? Please like this video, hit the little notification bell, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews uh, for this series, as well as any of my great horror con horror content. <coughs> Excuse me. My horror content that I have coming out after this series and throughout the rest of the year. Um, including like summer horror movies on DVD that I'll be jumping into in August here. So with all that being said, hope you guys are enjoying this series. Um, hope you're doing well. And as always, stay scared. Bye.